mechanisms of protein regulation in eukaryotic cells. Well, for this, we can go back to our central dogma of biology, where DNA is transcribed into mRNA, and then mRNA is translated into protein. Protein synthesis can be regulated by several mechanisms, but here are three that are listed. So a promoter is a sequence within the DNA that allows for the binding of the RNA polymerase. And so a promoter sequence then serves to increase the production of mRNA. Hence, you get more protein. Typically. Not always the case, but typically. Uh, DNA methylation is a way to decrease the amount of mRNA production of a particular gene, because if a particular nucleotide in the genetic sequence is methylated, the RNA polymerase cannot bind the promoter, and the gene will not be transcribed into mRNA. Protein degradation is a way of indirectly affecting protein synthesis because it doesn't directly affect protein synthesis. Instead, you're degrading the final product, which is the protein. And that can be done by proteases, such as a 23S proteasome, and several other proteases. Now, in addition to regulating Protein synthesis, protein activity can also be regulated. And this is done through several mechanisms, and uh, here I have listed three. So proteins are frequently undergo post-translational modifications, such as phosphorylation, methylation, acetylation, and the addition of these chemical groups affects the 3D structure of the protein in such a way that it can either activate or deactivate the protein such that it can or cannot catalyze a reaction or serve as a structural component um, of the cell. So kinases add phospho groups onto proteins, while phosphatases remove the phosphate groups. And this interplay between kinase and phosphase can affect the regulation of a protein. Coenzymes and cofactors are either small peptides, or in the case of cofactors, which are chemical components that are not peptides, can bind into certain places on proteins and activate proteins. And so the synthesis of these coenzymes and cofactors can affect the function of the protein. The last I'm going to talk about is negative and po positive feedback loops. So in negative feedback loops, what happens is that a protein will be made and it serves to prevent the uh, further transcription of other proteins. While in a positive feedback loop, a protein is made and serves to increase the transcription and hence translation of a particular gene. And so you get more proteins. And those are the particular mechanisms involved in regulating both protein synthesis and protein activity. Question 2C is as follows. The central dogma does not apply to some viruses. Select a specific virus or type of virus and explain how it deviates from the central dogma. Going back to the central dogma, DNA is transcribed into mRNA and is then translated into protein. And this occurs in all eukaryotic cells. Now, viruses 
where some viruses do not follow this central dogma. And one really great case of this is human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. HIV is simply RNA packaged in a protein coat with some lipids. And this goes into a cell and because the genome is made of RNA, you can't follow the central dogma of biology because the genetic information is not in the form of DNA, it's in the form of RNA. But HIV has evolved to overcome this by encoding a protein called reverse transcriptase. This enzyme catalyzes the formation of DNA from RNA. And this is called reverse transcription. So it's the opposite of what we see in the central dogma. Instead of going from DNA to RNA, through transcription, HIV has a genome made of RNA and has to go from RNA to DNA through reverse transcription by using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. So once the DNA is made, then we can get transcription, more RNA, and then the RNA is then made into protein by translation. And some of this RNA then gets trans translated into protein, while some of the RNA gets repackaged into vi virions, and those infect more cells.